truck, my truck's got a 5.9 liter Cummins in it. It's an awesome engine. Guess what it's got for emissions? A catalytic converter. Guess when it rolls cold? Only when I put my foot pulley into it and I got the tune up. How's it going guys? John here. Um, today we've got something different for you. Uh, last video you saw me with my tractor doing some digging, helping out a neighbor. Today um, it's all about Big Red. So time has come when you do an oil change which involves three gallons of oil. Yes, I said gallons. Uh, we're dealing with a 5.9 liter Cummins diesel from 2006. They also came in the 07 and 07 and a half models of the 25 and 3500 Dodges. This is a instructional video of how I do it. Now, a pros are gonna tell you a little bit different. This is how I grew up doing it. This is how I've been doing it for years. This is just my way of doing it. Not saying it's right or wrong. I'm sure there are gonna be some haters out there. That's not my intent. I'm here to show you the guy or girl who's never changed your oil before. Maybe you're just getting your learner's permit. Maybe you got your driver's license. Maybe you're getting tired of paying a mechanic and maybe you just wanna take pride in what you're doing and do the work yourself. If that's you, continue watching. I hope you enjoy this video. Always consult your vehicle owner's manual to ensure that you are using the proper type of oil, weight, and quantity, as well as double checking with local auto parts store to make sure you purchase the correct filters and you are purchasing a suitable oil for your needs. All right, so what we have today is the stuff we're gonna need to change this oil. Um, on the left side, we've got a Rotella T4-15W40. We also have two individual quarts for a total of three gallons. We have our STP oil filter. You can use any oil filter you want. And then while I'm in there, I'm also going to change the fuel filter. For me, I change these every five to 10,000 miles in accordance with the manual. Um, also, you'll need some type of large oil receptacle so you can take your oil to be recycled. The tools you need. Um, I usually use a half inch dry ratchet with a half inch to three eighths adapter, an extension if I need it, and then of course some gloves so you don't get your hands coated in oil, and some towels so you can clean up. Now, the creeper is something that's nice to have. You don't have to have it, but it always makes working on the vehicle a lot easier in my opinion. Don't forget your filter wrench. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our gloves on here. As you can see, I clearly forgot to put anything down, although I would encourage you to put down a drop cloth or cardboard, especially if you have a new driveway. Now we're gonna start the oil draining. That was a neighbor I helped last week driving by. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and let's go build this dream together. here hopefully you guys can see it first thing that's important to do is make sure you open up the airy vac and move this to where you can get to it what I'm doing now is I'm taking out the plug so we can let it drain place right here and yeah you can go around from the side but really just get to it from right here. I'm gonna take that 3 8 half inch adapter, put it in there. Take your 3 8 half inch adapter, pop it loose. Now, this truck's been running for a while, driving back and forth to work, so it's gonna take a little while for this to drain, and it's gonna be a little bit warm. Now those gloves, you're going to need those because this thing's going to be a mess once it drops. So we've got our spout open and our hole is available. So I'm going to let it drip a little bit, make sure it's loose, and bam. 
as you can see, there's a lot of oil coming out. I'm going to set this plug out of the way. It's not going to fall in oil. It always does. We're going to do that. So we're going to let this drain for a few minutes. We're going to wipe our hands down. And we're going to lift out the dipstick. That way it'll let the air come through the engine. Open up the dipstick just so all the air can go through and drain out. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the oil filter. So as soon as that gets done draining, we're going to start laying the air out. And the oil's still dripping. And while we wait, uh, we're going to do the oil filter next. It's up here. Hopefully, you guys can see that. This is an AC air compressor. So I've actually had to replace this before. I bought the truck used in 2009. This is a 2006 model. It's got 163,000 miles on it. Today we're going to do the oil change. We're going to change the fuel filter. I've replaced this belt in the last 163,000 miles. I've replaced the air compressor. I've changed the water pump, which is up on the top side, you can't see it right now. But undoubtedly, everybody loves the 5.9 liter Cummins diesel because of reliability and ease of maintenance. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and let's go build this dream together. So, all I've had to do on this truck, for the most part, is change the oil and make sure I've got a clean fuel filter every 5,000 to 10,000 miles. That's it. As far as emissions goes, this truck only has a catalytic converter. Nothing else. And the factory catalytic converter is still on the truck. Now everything else I've done is an upgrade that I chose to do. And we'll make that into another episode. Talk a little bit more about Big Red. This is just an instructional video to help you guys out. And also, you can share it with your friends. If you got a friend out there that doesn't know how to change their oil, maybe they'll laugh at me. And uh, I'm sure I'll get lots of comments from professional mechanics who are like, oh, it took you forever. To me, I just enjoy doing this on my own. I'm not here to say, hey, this is the absolute one and only way to do stuff. For me, it's much more about the experience of doing it myself and the pride I take in knowing that I did it myself. So I've been working on cars since I was a teenager. Love to read magazines, off-road magazines, car magazines. But for the most part, I love working on cars. That's why I created this channel, so I can share it with other people who have similar interests. I love cars, trucks, tractors, anything with an engine in it, ATVs. You know, I like driving off-road. I've got some philosophies about that. We'll talk about those in another video. Uh, for the most part, I just thought I would share, you know, how easy it really is to maintain a vehicle on your own. So let's check on the oil. So it's slowly dripping still. Um, it's getting to where it's pretty much good enough. We're going to go ahead and seal it up. A little bit of dirty oil is not going to hurt anything. Check on this oil here. All right, it looks like it's uh, almost done dripping. So all I usually do is I take, wipe it down a little bit. You know, not every single drop has to come out. There is three gallons of oil in there. For the most part, you're just going to take and clean it out. Take your drain plug, stick it back in. All right, so important thing about drain plug. So if you never knew this, righty tighty, lefty loosey. I know this may be redundant for our more experienced viewers, but you know, for the guy that's never changed their oil before, or girl, because girls like to work on cars too, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, everybody who has a passion about automobiles, they should be able to work on their vehicles. So, for the most part, I just snug it up hand tight. Alright, that way I don't cross thread anything. And then all I'm going to do is give it a quick wipe down. 
And then we're going to make sure our ratchet's going the right way. So we want to turn it to the right. So click. All right. Right. See, just so in case you don't understand, right. Or clockwise, however you want to look at it. So all you do is you just take, you feel it till it's snug. All right. And you don't want to overdo it. Take it snug. And just pull it a little bit. Now if you do it too hard, you'll strip the threads and this oil pan is a bear. Don't ever over tighten your drain plug. It's not holding any major pressure. All it's doing is stopping anything from dripping out the hole. Some mechanics will put that thing on super tight just so that you as the consumer and owner of the vehicle have a hard time taking it off and it'll take it back to them to discourage you from changing your oil. Not saying anybody would ever do that, but anytime I've ever had a vehicle taken to a quick stop oil lube type place, that is almost always super tight. Now, I did reuse the rubber ring. I'm sure some people will get mad about that. That ring is the same ring that was on this thing when I bought the truck in 2009. I don't see anything dripping, so your call. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna move up here to where we said the oil filter is. So if you can see where my hand is up there, hopefully you can, you've got a clear line of sight. The oil filter is our next thing. Now, the nice thing about a Dodge and this Cummins diesel is the oil filter just comes straight down. Now, it will drip some. Don't get me wrong, it will drip some. So we're going to move our drain pan over here so we don't get soaked in oil. All right, we're gonna try this filter cap ridge. See if this will work. So we've got our adapter. I haven't used this in a long time. All right. So if you buy one of these, make sure it fits your truck. And all you're gonna do, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Feel it getting loose now. Feel it getting loose. Alright. So now, just like we were doing, make sure our oil pan is down here. And all we're gonna do, we're gonna spin this off. Alright, hopefully everybody can see it up in there. I know it's dark. All right, we're gonna feel it slowly. Now it's gonna be heavy, because it's full of oil. All right, see it just gave way? We're gonna carefully, carefully, carefully lower it down without trying to spill it. Let's dump the oil out. And we're just gonna let it drain. That's all there is to it. All there is to it. All right. So if you see up there, you can see where it goes. The silver spin on. Where the oil filter screws on. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to prep our new oil filter. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Now let's go build this dream together. All right. So for these STP filters, same thing we took off. So the last one lasted. For some reason, they put this plastic on here and it's a pain to remove sometimes. Oh, that time that was easy. All right. So a lot of people will take and dump a whole quart of oil in there or some oil in there. I usually just put a little splash. Get enough on there just so we can, you always want to lube the ring here. Okay. That's the most important thing. And you also want to make sure the old ring came off of the one you just took off. I do the threads, make sure there's no burrs. There would be nothing worse than having to replace a piece of the car because of an oil filter issue. We're just going to wipe the 
a little bit of excess oil off. That way it doesn't smoke and make a big stink under the hood. All right, put our dirty rag in there. Set our oil filter down for a minute. And grab some extra rags, just in case we need them. Then we're gonna start putting it all back together. So we put the drain plug in, and now we're gonna put the oil filter in. So for the oil filter. All right, let's move this old oil out of the way. All right, we're gonna check, make sure, yep, the ring's still on there, so it's not stuck up there. Now the way I do this, and this is just my personal preference, so I hold it up there very gently. Now don't know if you can, okay, you guys heard it. This is more feel. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. So we get it on there, and we're just gonna rotate it. Gently, gently, gently. If it feels like it gets in a bind, that's bad. But for the most part, It'll, it'll thread itself on. And sometimes we just move it around. Oh, there it goes. Alright, we got a few threads on. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. See how it's loose? Alright, it's hanging up there. It's loose. It rotates easy. And all we're going to do we're going to snug it down until it stops. And just like we did with the drain plug, we're going to give it that extra little turn. Eighth inch to a quarter inch. Now for me, I usually just get it on as tight as I can by hand. Put two hands up in there. Alright. That to me is good. It's not backing off. Alright. Now, just a matter of finishing it all up. No drips, no oil. We did pretty good today. Now let's go topside. All right, if you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and keep on coming back for more. Also, hit subscribe and the bell so you get the latest updates. part is time to fill the oil up so all we got to do here is take this loose this is a large red funnel that I picked up it's funny because I kept saying filter the whole time I was filming this I clearly meant funnel as you can see in the video I'm wiping down the funnel to ensure there's no dirt you don't want dirt inside of your engine This really is a perfect size funnel for this job. So first thing we're going to do, is we're going to start off with the big boy here. So. That's the easiest way to do it. Now you don't want to get any of this aluminum foil down inside of your engine. That would be bad, so we're going to carefully remove it. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. All right. Now, I installed this bumper since the last time I did an oil change, so we're going to have to climb up there. here what we're gonna do is pour in our oil now you don't want to go too fast you don't want to go too slow I've still got the engine oil dipstick out and what that does is it lets it breathe if you don't take that out it'll actually gurgle up on you and sometimes it'll make a big splash nobody wants that to happen Two and a half gallons of 
oil right like that we're just gonna set that in there let it drain for a while that should be good enough all right there's two and a half gallons down and now each quart is a quarter of gallon should remember that from elementary school so we're just going to dump that in this is the next thing I can let that one drain. Let this one drain for a little bit. That way we can get every nice drop out. All right, if you like this video, make sure you smash that like button and keep on coming back for more. Also, hit subscribe and the bell so you get the latest updates. All right, so we're gonna let that drain for about five minutes. Once that gets settled in, we're gonna actually go ahead and put the cap back on. All right. All right. Try not to drip any oil more than we have. empty then you you will have a little residual oil in there so it's not too big of a deal Just wipe that down wipe anywhere you dripped now this isn't the dirtiest engine it's also not the cleanest engine Just wipe it down that we don't get that burned oil smell all right so the last thing we have to do after you've let that sit. It's been about five minutes. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Now let's go build this dream together. All right, what we're gonna do, put our dipstick all the way in. i take, I'll wipe it all down. See all that black oil that was on there? So now it's nice and clean. All right, let's see if you guys can see it. So right here, it says safe, okay? Anything below that, here's where it says add. So I'm not sure if you guys can see it on the GoPro or not. So I'm gonna slide this back in. Just gonna let it sit for a minute. Bathe in a little bit of oil. And pull it out catch any dribbles all right now that's gonna be a little bit high but that's about right where we want it so now you can see it so right down here is where it needs to be now remember there's a little bit extra because we haven't turned the engine over yet that oil filter is not full so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside the truck Start. All right, the gauges are coming on. Now we're going to be watching the oil pressure over here. Now see, it had no pressure. It's going to come up. And we want it set right where it's at, right about 40. As long as it's in those two bars, you've got good oil pressure. All right. We're just going to kill it, and after we kill it, we're going to go back, we're going to check the dipstick again. Make sure it's not too incredibly high and not too incredibly low. You want it right in the sweet spot. So 
So really you should wait about five minutes before you check your oil again. Again, we've got a rag here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the dipstick. All right. Just gonna give her a good wipe down. Now see, it's still dirty. It's a diesel. Diesels are dirty. Okay, no matter how much clean oil you get in there, it's still gonna be dirty. Now you can send it off to a lab and be tested and everything else. The thing I recommend about diesel though, is if you buy a new one, go out, change, make sure you change the oil before you drive it very far. Cause you don't know, maybe the dealer changed it out, maybe they didn't. We're gonna check it one more time, just for good measure. All right, if you look closely, it's a little high there. If you look at this side, where the oil line is, it's right there in the safe zone, right where we want it. So it'll all balance out and it's gonna be okay. Like I said, I've always put three gallons in here every time I've done it. So it will be fine. So it's got 160,000 miles on it. The great thing about this engine a little attention to detail. Make sure, I like to make sure, it doesn't have to be that way, just so you can read it. So it says engine oil. So that's how you change the oil in a 2006 Dodge 3500 with a 5.9 Cummins diesel. Next, we're gonna take, we're gonna change the fuel filter. That is always a fun experience. All right, for the record, there is no grandiose good way to change the fuel filter on this thing. As you can see, it's just a plastic spin on cap. All right, climbing back up on Big Red. Now, the most important thing Make sure you get the right filter here. There's not a whole lot of room. The bumper does make it nice to stand up here. So in your kit, you should have clean filter, check, and new o-ring, check. Now, if you get this too loose or too tight, these things have a lot of pressure and will spray everywhere. Now, you can see in the GoPro, how clean that new filter is. So what we gotta do, is we gotta be able to get both hands on here. Alright. It's turning, slowly but surely. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Tidy tidy, lefty loosey. This thing's on a little tight. Like I said, the engine's still warm. Now you don't want to do this if it's super hot. All right, so there we go. Now what I do is pull this out. All right, try not to drip it. All right. Pop the old one off. I'm gonna put the new one in, like such. And you're gonna try to take, pull this ring off here. It's hard to do sometimes with gloves. Sometimes if you get a knife or something, that, that'll help. 
and sometimes you can just roll them off. All right, so old filter out. Notice I got a little dirty. It'll be all right. All right. I'm gonna take that little bit of fuel residue you got on your fingertips. Yeah, put that new ring on. I'm just gonna roll it around on there. And you want to make sure it's seated all the way to the bottom. What you don't want to do, I've done it before, is if you over tighten these, it will actually take that ring and roll it out of the filter. That'll come up. All right, now there will be a little bit of spillage. Okay, it's all right. If there is, you just kind of wiggle it in there. All right, again, I'm gonna back it up until it goes down into the grooves. You don't want to over tighten it or strip this. Once it starts going, all right, you can feel it start grabbing. There it goes. All right, should just go nice and smooth. All you're gonna do is you're gonna get as tight as you can by hand without squeezing it and overdoing it. Now they make it so you can put a wrench on here if you need to. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. They do make it where you put a wrench on here. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to cycle the pump. And what we're hoping is that does not spray diesel fuel all over the engine bay. So you hear the pump, checking, there's nothing spraying out, it's a little wet from before. Right. Now we're going to start it, and there we go. So success, success, success. You gotta maintain your vehicle gotta maintain your vehicles. Hey guys, I hope everybody enjoyed the video. I just want to say thanks for watching. If you like, subscribe, and share with your friends so that they can learn to change their oil in their 2006 or 2007 Dodge with the 5.9 Cummins diesel. I love Big Red. I'll keep her for years, but once again, she's part of my dream. Go out there and start building your dream. Hey, I really appreciate all you guys and girls that watched all the way through to the end. So, hit that like button, subscribe, Hit the bell, that way it will motivate me to create more content. And also in the comments below, tell me what you guys want to see. Do you want to see more of the tractor, more of the truck, more dialogue, or more action videos? Your comments will help me build this channel. And thanks again. I can't do this without your support.